Hey, hey. Right, Jane Dan, top loader. Very nice to meet you. Nice, uh, thanks for your time. Um, so we're in the studio, you're putting the finishing touches to the third album. How's it? Uh, how's it all go? It's uh, it's going really well. I mean, we've had a, a great recording experience. Um, probably unlike any other one we've had. Actually, it's been it's, we've, we've done it in stages as opposed to all in one go, which I, I quite enjoyed. Uh, yeah, it's been like a real very normal process. Very, no, it used to be, you know, you do the recording somewhere and you go and do the mix and it's two separate, very separate things, whereas this has very much been like a fluid fluid thing all the way through. We've been mixing as we're going and throwing ideas in and even now, which is like officially the mix, there's still lots of little bits of recording going on and, and stuff like that. But um, I think we're really proud. It's one of those, you get so engrossed in it. Yeah, It's yeah, very I'm difficult sure. to become, you know, sort of objective. But I think we're really, well, we are really proud of what we've recorded. You know, it's been... Obviously, sort of seven years since our last yeah, album, yeah. and everything's changed so much. We've changed, the music scene's changed, our tastes have changed. We've grown up a little bit, um, and I think it's quite a different sound and album, really. Um, I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. Yeah, what, what sort of direction? Uh, you know, is it, it's not sort of a sort of natural follow-on then. I actually like, feel like um, we follow a direction that we're we're truly comfortable with. I don't really know what that is. I, I mean, some, I, as Joe just said, it, it might surprise some people, but it, it doesn't necessarily surprise me. Uh, we had a track on our very, on our debut album called Achilles Hill, um, and I feel I feel like in in parts it, it's a little bit more like that. So it's not really a remove removal from what we are. It's I think what oh, we, no, well, that, that was always my favourite track. Well, right. it's funny because yeah, yeah. it, you know a lot of people if you're sort of there's two kind of top loader fans. You're, you're kind of Achilles Hill fan, and then you're obviously, obviously you're dancing in the moonlight, and they're kind of two different fans as well. I think of two different people, but this is definitely a lot more of of, of going on that Achilles Hill. Kind of tip. I think I think it's the sort of album if we'd have carried on making albums, we'd have got here anyway. Yeah. But we just Agreed, didn't yeah. make the ones in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of like it would it would have been a natural progression had we carried on making records. Right? I don't I don't think we've been too scared to sort of experiment a little bit as well. I think before maybe we, we were a bit more concerned about how what the boundaries we could put. I don't think we have. And not necessarily think we've pushed many, you know tons of boundaries, but for us certainly I've just been more relaxed about how we approach the music and just whatever sounds good we'll go with. So I mean, I mean the songs that's on the album, let's say, uh, when have, have they been, you know, have you written them all together as a band or gonna, since we'll you got back together? pause on this question because the door's about to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it like, um, just naturally sort of followed on? <laughs> um, a lot of, all of these songs, we, we got kind of back together last year to do a few sort of gigs <laughs> and festivals and things like that and, and um, we were a five piece and then we've gone down to a four piece. And then, kind of from then, everything kind of changed this year. All, all but two of these songs on the album have all been written this year. So it's. Ah, which is incredible. I mean, I've been writing all, you know, since from day one, you know, all the way through, really. Yeah, yeah. And have, you know, a whole bunch of songs. But it's, it's ironic that, you know, it's only this year that this album's actually really taken, you know, the band as a four piece started to sound different and it made a bit more sense. And with the songs have been written for that as well. So. Um, yeah, I, know, I, I think I'm, I, I can't, I'm amazed that you know we had six years between our second album and our third, and, the, and this album, the third yeah, album, yeah, definitely, and, and and all the songs were written in the last sort of nine or ten months, which is quite. Uh, Makes me wonder what I <laughs> what, what was doing in the other five years. Yeah. I'm sure they'll see the light of day somewhere, but you know, maybe maybe uh, not in this oh, album. Thanks a lot. And a bit only human. What's uh, well, only human is actually is the title um, of one of the older songs actually. Um, there's two songs on the on the album. One's called uh, to the old, much older, you know, four, five. I think only human probably was written sort of five or six years ago. It's a song that me and Dan demoed, literally after Top Loader split up the first time. 2003, we demoed it for. So and it's just you know we've obviously been like lots of bands. You have to you got your album, you know the songs you're doing and stuff like that. And it's sort of one of those titles that's definitely stuck. As a, and we always we never had a you know an album title that was that was a song of the album. And I thought that we always kind of wanted that, and we kind of been through them. And also, a lot of the, a lot of the songs are very sort of, you know, human emotions and, and characteristics and traits that, that we have. And so yeah, I think it's a quite a fitting album title, really. Yeah. So, so some of the titles there, just looking at the website, are uh, "Balance All Things," "Sound of Your Soul," "Paradise." Yeah. Are you sort of, I mean, uh, which is your favourite song so far? Let's say if you had to pick one. So, interestingly, actually, I think mine is probably only human. Actually, that's the yeah. one that I can listen to. Over and over and over again. Not that I can't the others, but that one particularly just has it's something quite special about that song for me. Uh, it's quite removed, maybe, as in, in the actual sound of the song from maybe what we've done before. And my, mine's the song called "Sound of Your Soul," which is probably one of the first ones that was written this year, and that for me was the real turning point where 
I knew that the album could sound something. We, we knew that it could sound something, something new and something different. I think before that, we toured with a few things last year, and it, it kind of was sounded like a much more how we used to sound. But that that song definitely, you know, made us believe that perhaps we could take a slightly yeah. different direction, maybe. Yeah, superb. And uh, and working with the, with Dan Son Supple then. Yeah, he's unbelievable. We're so um, we feel really privileged to work with him actually, because you know when you think about a producer for an album that's been so long coming for us you know it's really important you get the producer they become the act the, 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 or the, in our case a fifth member of the band for the duration of the, of the process and so therefore it's super important you get on with them but also that they've made records that you aspire to i guess or like and i love some of this work done has done i really do and, he, and he's been so brilliant to work with he's never pushed his ideas too much you know like you don't want to work with a producer that says it's my way and that's it you know he's not like well, that he has too. and he's just done it in such a clever way that we yeah have. He's a stupidly <laughs> yeah. clever man who knows how to you know, minute player. No, he's just been really, really lovely and. Ex- what has he ex- changed then? Exactly that. You know that. I think he's just w- ma- without him wouldn't have been there. Something. I just think he's made a. I think he's made us sound how we want to sound. I, I, I know that sounds so obvious, but you know, you ask a lot of bands will say the same thing. Sometimes you make records and they sound great, but it's not how you started initially thinking it was going to end up sounding. Whereas I, this is everything that I wanted it to sound like. He sort of channeled what was already there because we, we, you know, we we worked a lot on these songs ourselves and. You know, done lots of the, the yeah. bits and bobs ourselves, and I think we really want someone who's just going to channel what was already there, yeah. and not go. You know, like we, we've had in, the, in top, kind of top loader part one, you get a producer in who just, you know, he's very much create like, a sound, sound like this. Yeah. yeah Whereas yeah. now we really knew what much more we, what we wanted to do, and it was about finding someone that. And the way it happened was really nice as well. Originally, what you know, we we were kind of he wasn't available, and then we weren't ready, and in the end, we just came together at the at the right mm-hmm. time, really. And he was available when we needed him, which. For a producer as good as Dan's, it's not always the case. So it worked out almost like it was supposed to be. Yeah, and what, what, how comes it uh, in this studio here? D- Danton actually has a room here in, ah. in, in Battery, um, which is um, where he does a lot of his mixing from actually. So this is why we're here mixing. But we didn't record here. Uh, you see the size of his room, you'll realise why we didn't record here. <laughs> <laughs> Whereabouts is the recording done? We did it at Hookend, out in uh, just outside Reading, which is we worked at before years and years ago, um, which is kind of a very sort of nice residential kind of studio but um, I don't think for one minute any of us thought we'd be doing any recording there but I think we, we, we got them for a, for a knockdown <laughs> but no it's a great place and also it's nice to be somewhere and we, we you know we got left alone we were out there for a month and you can really sort of get into the vibe and, and you know and explore different avenues really. it's funny we recorded in Hoken which as Joe says is a beautiful country manor house uh, we recorded there in 2001 I think it was or 2002 somewhere around that point and I just don't remember ever really appreciating anything about anything. the glory of how beautiful the countryside was or, or how lovely the house was this time and yeah, maybe being a bit older but also just more focused I think on, on actually making a great album like you know I really enjoyed the place and no, we, 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 we actually all walked in there and went have you been here before <laughs> it, was, it was all it was at the time when we were very busy and and there was all, all sorts of things going on and you just don't appreciate you know which is we were young and didn't really appreciate what was going on really and um, I, we walked into the control room and was like, I've got absolutely no recollection whatsoever of, being in, of ever being here, you know, even though we had, but yeah. there you go. But I mean, so what, why get together now anyway? What was the, what was the big impetus? I know you got together for the, for the charity show and that, but I mean... I don't think we got together for the charity show, I think that was that, we oh. decided that that would be the first thing we'd like to do, because it was, you know, a hometown and it was a good a cause that meant something to us, but I think, I think really um, that wasn't the reason we got back together. I think, we, we actually um, have been talking about, me and Joe, you know, we've all stayed in contact, but probably not all been in the room together. This is mum. It was your mum. Um, we, you know, we, we've been in contact, but I don't think we'd all five of us have been in the room, because originally when we got back together, it was five of us. And, um, and I actually got married uh, two years ago, and it was my stag night, and I just invited everyone. And I think it's the first opportunity that we'd all had to sort of get together. And uh, it was great. It was really, really great fun to get back together. We had a couple of beers and... It became a very late night, actually, and you know we started talking in the early hours in the morning over a couple of beers, like well, how much fun it would be to do it right. again. And it's kind of very natural. It wasn't like a phone, a phone around. It wasn't like that. It was just a couple of beers and sound like a good idea. I think a lot of us hadn't even thought about yeah. getting back together for really. You hadn't really. For years yeah. and years, it's sort of one of those things. You, it was left where it was left.